Good morning, New Life Church. God is good and all the time. I'm going to read just one verse from Scripture, so I want to invite you just to stand up. We're going to read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 23, the first part, and then we'll say a prayer and jump into the Word of God. Buy the truth and don't sell it. So say those words with me. Ready? Buy the truth and don't sell it. Put your hand on your Bible. Father God, we thank you for these moments. Let your spirit speak this morning. Father God, we've come to hear from you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the worship team, Father God, that gave of their time to sacrifice, to help us enter into your presence, to make our spirits and our souls, Father God, sensitive to your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Please have a seat. Thank you, Pastor Vasile, Pastor Vadim. Thanks for having me, uh, Victoria. Thanks for leading the worship and for um, making this um, introduction really easy for me. I'm here with my family over here on my left, some nieces, some nephews. So it is a joy always to be with you at New Life. You guys, um, I guess for a younger, younger generation, you bring it. You bring it. You bring the Holy Spirit. It's energizing. I, I love to come here, love to hear the worship songs. I usually go back and say, hey, I haven't heard this one. Let's, let's sing this one at the church that we're a part of. So you're always a blessing to me. Um, this morning we're going to take a topic that's really simple and what the Bible teaches and shares about it. And I'm going to challenge you, especially at the end, that if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, that you receive that kind of stirring in your spirit and come and pray. In 1940, the Walt Disney Productions introduced and released a, a film for children called Pinocchio. Anybody familiar with that movie? And if you remember the story of Pinocchio, it was obviously to listen to his quote-unquote father, his creator. But one of the lessons that even to this day um, we bring into our culture, especially the U.S. culture, it was a global production. Uh, it cost about $2 million and made over $160 million, a hundredfold return. It was a hit. But one of the things we learned in our culture from Pinocchio is that when this little boy who was a wooden boy and then became a real boy. But when he lied, what would happen? His nose would grow. And it was one of those stories that maybe your mom or dad told you or something you read and you would tease your friends and, your, and, and maybe some other colleagues at school or something. But you know that in 2012, the University of Granada did a study of what would happen when a person lied. Said a little false truth. They maybe bent it, didn't tell the whole truth. And what they did is they put a... Um, a, a warmth signal and they would see if the temperature of the nose would increase when someone lied. Now I want you to check this on me and go ahead and do your own research. But in 2012, without any doubt, it was confirmed that when you or I or any other person on this planet, when the, we lie, tell a mystery, don't tell the whole truth, whether it's to your parents, your, your wife, your husband, the temperature around your nose goes up. It's almost as if this fiction story told us the truth. So this morning what I want to speak to you is the greatest lie ever told. I want to speak to you this morning about the greatest lie ever told. Let's start from the first book in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, pick it up in chapter 3, verse 2, 3, and 4. And here the scene is set with Eve, the first woman created, Never a baby. She was always a woman. And there the serpent tempts her. And pick it up in verse 2. And the woman said to, ser to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Now, just a, a quick introduction by talking about death. What you need to understand is when Scripture, when God talks about death, He talks about separation. I want you to say that with me. Separation. When there occurs a death, and you all know this, and Scripture says, we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Amen? And what happens is when that death occurs, there's separation. So when you go to a funeral, when you see someone pass, what has happened is that body is no longer full of the spirit or for the soul. It has been separated. So in this moment when God told Eve, you will surely die, what he means is my spirit will no longer be with you. It will be death. It will be broken. It will be separated from you. Now the serpent told her that you will not surely die. Verse 16 and 17. And the Lord commanded to the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. 
But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you shall eat of it, you shall surely die. Because Adam and Eve believed this lie, it kicked them out of paradise. And for many of us and for some of us and some, most of the world, because they believed this lie, it will keep them out of heaven everlasting. There is a spiritual battle going on in your life, and I just want to talk about a few things. Number one, um, different universities, University of Alabama, Birmingham, uh, different psychologies learn and talked about this lying, almost pandemic that we're going to talk about this morning. At, the years, at, at four years of age, little children that are in our midst, maybe at Sunday school, 90% of kids will understand the meaning of lying. According to this research, 60% of people 18 and old, older are incapable of having a conversation without lying once every 10 minutes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So some of you who have been out there with non-believers, you know this statement is true. You know this is true. Um, on average, and of course this is an average, there's compulsive lying and some lying. On average, three lies are told by adults every 10 minutes. Now... Parents are the primary victims of lying. So if you're here today, you have precious little children, you know you can smell it when something's off. Where you been? Why is this so quiet in the house? What's going on? Nothing. You know that nothing means something. Someone say amen. amen. <laughs> Every week in the United States, Americans tell about at least a minimum of 11 lies. The average person lies four times daily, which is, do the math, about 1,400 times a year. Now, men have a specific problem because they're twice as likely to lie than women. A man in the U.S. will lie about six times a day and a woman only lies about three times. One author wrote this. When you tell the truth, everybody say tell the truth, it becomes part of your past. When you tell a lie, it becomes part of your future. There is a spiritual battle between truth and lies in your life. Not from a preacher. Hear the word of God this morning. 100% of the truth means the truth. 99% of the truth is a... Oh, you don't like this, the preaching this morning. <laughs> Some of you are squirming a little bit. Hear me. It cannot be truth if it's only 99% true. Correct? It has to be all truth. You have to come all truth before the Lord. In the United States, as you guys know, many movies that you've seen, some of you have been in courtrooms. As you walk into a courtroom and you take the stand, you're about to testify, try to be a witness before the courtroom. You take an oath and you say, I swear by Almighty God that the evidence that I shall give be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. For God's people in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 16, it talks about being a false witness. In other words, a liar. If a liar rises against any man to testify against him of wrongdoing, verse 18, and the judge shall make careful inquiry. And indeed, the witness is a false witness. He's a liar who has testified falsely against his brother. Then you shall do to him as he thought to have done to his brother. In other words... If you, could, if you go ahead and accuse someone, you testify that someone stole a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, a, a Bentley, and he was supposed to serve in jail for two years. Because you lied, you go to jail for two years now. If someone committed adultery, if someone committed a sin, if someone murdered someone and you falsely accused them because of your lie, you now have to step into their punishment. I remember in a company I worked years ago, I can never forget, we had an employee that had committed fraud. And it was, it was a big deal, but we could fix it. It was, it was fixable. Uh, when we got together with HR, we got together with management, I sat in a meeting, we talked to her. We said, hey, you committed this fraud and you did this wrong and we want to fix it. She lied. I didn't do that. No, no, I, I didn't. No, it wasn't me. When we presented her with evidence, emails, text messages the IT folks found, different things, she started shaking and she finally confessed. To my surprise, I want to tell you something. To my surprise, we, we, uh, we excused her from the room and we had a meeting. 
the managers, myself, HR. And you know what was so interesting? These were non- unbelievers. These were, they were not Christians. Some were unbelievers, atheists, some were Muslims. To my surprise, they wanted to fire her not for the fraud, but for the lie. They said, we can deal with someone making a mistake even if they did intentional. We can correct them. But if they're willing to lie, we cannot keep them. We need to fire her. She's not willing to tell the truth. In the U.S. Code subsection, section 15, subsection 54, there is a section that talks about false advertising. Everybody say false advertising. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you got kids, you turn on the, the, the kids' channel, they have all these Come now, buy these toys, buy these, it's awesome. And your kid's all jazzed up and they want to go spend your money, right? And you're like, oh, that's false advertising. It's just good for a few moments. But there's a section here that talks about there's a $5,000 fine or imprisonment for more than six months if you have false advertising. Now, I'm going to put a couple pictures up here, not to talk about false advertising, but to talk about how we're conditioned. Everybody say conditioned. We're conditioned to receiving more lies than truth. So there's a picture of, uh, on the left and on the right. Before makeup and after makeup. Now, if you leave here this morning, you say, oh, Pastor David doesn't want, to, doesn't want anybody to wear makeup. Yes, I do. <laughs> Some people need that. The problem is if you define yourself by your makeup. My wife's right here. Years ago, before we got married, I'll never forget. I was out of state. I was visiting my wife. And we talked and she's like, and she said to me, honey, this weekend is going to be a makeup free weekend. I said, wait, what does that mean? No makeup this week. I want you to see me how I really am. I'm not trying to hide. I'm not trying to put CoverGirl and L'Oreal and all the different lipstick. No, no, no. I want you to see who I am. Not to love me because of how I can uh, make my face or make these different things look on me. I want you to know the truth. And in, in, there's this kind of false advertising that's going on, the truth and the lie, the truth and the lie. There was even one person that when they got married, they went on their honeymoon, they, they couldn't even recognize their wife. <laughs> they said, who are you? He's like, wait, let me put my face on. And she went into the, into the bathroom. Now, this is a little bit uh, in your face, but I'm going to say it. One author, a uh, preacher, says this, definition of stupid is this. Knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing the lies. God has spoken to you that needs to be a change in your life. God through his word, through a convention, through a conference, through a speaker, through the pastor, has continually told you, you are not longer of this world. You are his child. Someone say amen. Tony Evans says it this way. Truth is God's view on any subject. The truth is God's view on any subject. As Jesus is being interrogated moments before he's about to go on the cross, Pilate pulls him in his, in his room. And it's just the two, two of them. And they speak. And in John chapter 18, 37 and 38, Jesus talks to Pilate and he says, You say I am a king. The reason I have been born, Jesus says, the reason I've come into the world is to bear witness to the truth. And then Pilate says these words that are famous. We see it in the Chosen series. We see it on movies and films, the Jesus film. And he says these words, what is truth? He's been so deceived his entire life. He has yet to find the truth. Psalm 100 verse 5 says it this way. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Listen to me. Hear me. Hear the voice of God this morning. If it was true for your mom that God is good. If it was true for your grandfather that God is good. If it was true for Billy Graham. If it was true for Francis Asbury. For John Wesley. Then as you sit this morning you need to understand. It's not about what the world says. It's what the word of God says. And he is good. He is merciful. He does forgive. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter your debt. God says, I can wash you. I can cleanse you. I can use you. I can mold you. That is the truth. It endures for all generations. 
I have, my, I have my sons here. I have my daughter here. It, it gives me so much joy and comfort knowing that the same God I know, the same God that forgave me when I cried and when I teared up and when I said, Lord, I'm giving you my life, is the same God that can work in their lives. Because he is the same through all generations. Psalm 117 verse 2. For his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord endures forever. In other words, truth has no expiration date. I know you go to Kroger and you look at the milk and there's an expiration date. You check out the eggs, you see an expiration date. Everything around you has an expiration date. But the truth of God endures forever. Lies expire, but the truth of God endures forever. This book, this Bible that me and you have is a book of truth. It tells the good, it tells the bad, and it tells the ugly. It says some ugly sins about Moses. He killed a man, David. He committed adultery. Talks about the good, the bad, and the ugly. God's not withholding from you. He doesn't have to treat you as an adolescent, a baby. He says, you are man enough. You are woman enough. I can speak to you. I can tell you the truth. There's a phrase, and I found it this, this week online. Hurt me with the truth, but don't comfort me with a lie. The Russian version of that was a little more <laughs> bold. Can I share it with you? It says of this. It's better to be slapped by the truth than kissed with a lie. Some will say amen. See, children look at the packaging. Man, they offended me. Wow, I can't believe they said. Did you see that post they did on LinkedIn? Did you see that Facebook? Did you see that? But the question is, okay, is it the truth? Is it God's truth? Is it something you have to confront? In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 21, Daniel says this, but I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. Psalm 119 says the same thing. It says, your righteousness and an everlasting righteousness and your law, scripture, is truth. And Psalm 119, verse 151 says, you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth truth. When God lists his top 10, how you should live your life as a husband, as a mom, as a father, when he does his top 10, number nine is do not lie. Do not bear false witness. Some of you today I know are sitting here or watching online and saying, okay, pastor, okay, preacher, okay. But lying's not a big deal. Okay, you're talking about the convicts sitting in jail this morning. You're talking about those guys who are committing, you know, hacking into CIA. You're talking about those types of folks. But let me tell you something. How would you feel if someone lied to you? Let me give you an example. The IRS knocks on your door, April 15th. <laughs> it's coming up, all right, in about three and a half, four months, five months. And they say, hey, you misrepresented the statement here. You forgot that income over there. You excluded this. We're going to fine you $5,000. And you're like, okay, okay. June comes around. You finally get a statement from the IRS. And it doesn't say $5,000. It says $50,000. They lied to you. How would you feel if your spouse lied to you? How would you feel if God lied to you, would that be a big deal? Psalm 119 verse 160 says this, the entirety of your word is truth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, he's not hiding. He's speaking truth into your life, to your children, into your business, into your family. He says, the entirety of your word is truth. One preacher said it this way, the truth is still the truth even if no one believes it. A lie is still a lie even if everyone believes it. You know, I like to say this with my, with my kids when we go through different, different uh, kind of, you know, parenting sessions. I say, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it looks like a duck, it's not a chicken. It's not a cow. It's a duck. It's the truth. Psalm 146 verses 5 and 6 says, Happy is he 
who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever. Keeps truth. Come on, church. Keeps truth. Do you know that God loves the truth? Someone say amen. He loves when you say, I don't have any hidden ace up my sleeves. I'm taking all my cards out. I'm coming to you as I am. I know I need washing. I know I need cleansing. I know I need a change. I know I need a revival. I know I need a revelation in my life. I know I need that in my life. He loves truth. But do you also know that he hates liars? The enemy of your soul, Satan, the accuser, the devil... You know, he's called the king of. And when you speak a lie, you're speaking his language. You're not speaking Russian. You're not speaking Ukrainian. You're speaking Lyonese. And all of a sudden, you're very frequent on his language. John chapter 4 verse 23 says it this way. But the hour is coming, Jesus says, and now when the true worshipers will worship the, the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such a worship. When we speak truth, we are speaking as our Father in heaven wants us to speak. When we speak lies, what happens to us all of a sudden, we've changed the channel. On your XM radio, on your FM radio, you've changed the channel. And now no longer is the Spirit of God in you. It's a different spirit. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. John chapter 18, verse 31, 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples in lead, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It's your choice to tell the truth. It's your choice to live by God's truth. He's not forcing you, but he's telling you the truth. Not of condemnation, but of an invitation. John chapter 14 verse 6 says it this way. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You cannot come to God any other way. Just because it's not comfortable, just because you don't want to give up that sin, just because you don't want to give up that friendship, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, there is no other way. See, I'm reminded by Interstate 95 and Interstate 20. I grew up down in South Florida and there was Interstate 95 that goes all the way from Key Largo, Key West, all the way up through different states, all the way up the East Coast, up to Maine. And for 1,920 miles, it just keeps going north, just keeps going north, just keeps going as far as the continental U.S. Then there's Interstate 20. When I moved to Atlanta, I found about Interstate 20. And I would drive on Interstate 20, and it goes all the way from one side to the other. It goes through states like South Carolina all the way to Texas. It's 1,530 miles. But neither Interstate 20 or Interstate 95 will take you to Michigan, Colorado, or Missouri. They never go there. So then the question I ask you, the path that you've chosen... The path in your life that you've given and you said, okay, this is who I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to pursue. Is it on the path that leads you to life? John chapter 17 verse 17 says this. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, the Holy Spirit. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Now I want to tell you something as you sit here this morning. The truth doesn't cost you anything, but a lie could cost you everything. It could cost you your life. Now I want to end with this story. And a few examples, but I'm just about done. Matthew chapter 19, 21 through 22. This is a story about a, a rich young man. A young Mark Zuckerberg, if you will. Or a young Jeff Bezos, if you will. Just an entrepreneur. You know, he, he got, you know, he hit a home run. He was super smart, super ambitious. You know, he didn't, you know, didn't do anything else, but that was his passion. And there's a young rich man that comes to Jesus and he talks about, Lord, I, I want to I be saved. I want to have eternal blessing. I want to have everlasting blessing. And in, pick, in chapter 19, pick it up in verse 20. This is what it says. The, word, the young man said to him, to Jesus, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? He felt something missing. Jesus said to him, 
If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful or sad, for he had great possessions. So go back to how we started this, this morning, the greatest lie ever told. Okay, preacher, what's the greatest lie ever told? What's the greatest lie that, you know, that ever, ever been in history? Was it, was it in the Garden of Eden? Was it, was it the flat earth theory? Was it the round earth theory? What, what's the greatest lie ever told? The greatest lie ever told is the one that keeps you out of heaven. It's the one that says you need more of this world and less of God. It's the one that says I can spend more time at my company. I can spend less time with my family. I can spend more time with everyone else but with God. It is the lie that will keep you from your destiny that what God has called you. Whether it's a Sunday school teacher, whether it's a missionary, whether it's an entrepreneur that can help missions, whether it's a worship team leader, it doesn't matter. The greatest lie ever told is the one that keeps you from your calling. The one that keeps you from your destiny. The one where God has chosen you from your mother's womb and has called you to live righteously and to walk with Him and to talk with Him and to know His calling on your life. That's the one that will keep you from your eternal blessing. So how has the world lied to you? How has the world spoken into your life and says, hey, whether it's Instagram or TikTok, you don't need more of God. You don't need more of His presence. You don't need that old-timey stuff prayer. You don't, no. You don't need to read scripture. No, 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 no. Just download another Netflix movie, another podcast. How has the world lied to you? And I want to invite you to stand up. Some of you young folks haven't really given everything to God. You may be doing a checklist saying, I can come here sometimes, but not all the time. I'm not willing to give up that habit. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to you this morning. Because you've been living halfway. Or you've been living in a lie that the world has taught you. I want to invite you to come because I want to pray with you this morning. If you've been believing lies that will keep you from God's destiny. God can't forgive me. I want you to come and I want to pray with you this morning. Here in the altar. That you would fulfill the destiny and the calling that God has given you. That God has specifically chosen you. Yes, even in your family, even between your brothers and sisters, there's a Joseph here. There's a Daniel here. There's a David here. There's an Esther here. And I want to pray with you. Victoria, you can come up. When the Holy Spirit guides you into your truth, it's not going to be into your comfort. Someone say amen. He's going to pull you out of your comfort. Maybe you're not used to coming and praying up in the front. Maybe you're not used to someone laying hands over you, which is biblical. But this morning is your morning. November 12th is your day. November 12th, 2023 is a day where you're like, okay, I'm done going halfway with God. I'm done going halfway with church. I'm done going halfway in my prayers. I'm done going halfway with what God's promised me. I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to start believing His truth. I want our prayers to be lifted up and the worship team, you guys can come, they're going to sing. But as they sing, I'm going to be down here. I want to pray with you this morning. This isn't about a show. This isn't about a good preaching. This is about you meeting with Him. Holy Spirit speaking to you. Amen.